So let's move to uh, the transportation issue that I highlighted earlier. We have a number of viewers who are concerned about this. One viewer in Minneapolis who notes that um, he's concerned about uh, investment in multimodal transport, uh, transportation and that current funding missions are not uh, sustainable. Uh, we have another viewer from Minneapolis who's concerned about uh, long-term funding for transit. Uh, a uh, viewer from St. Paul that uh, uh, not quite as enthusiastic about transit, notes that roads and bridges are in terrible disrepair, wants a 10-year dedicated funding plan, and that other viewers who are concerned about uh, the uh, standard um, for transportation in greater Minnesota, and uh, noting that uh, we're behind with, uh, from other, or behind other cities. There are a wide variety of opinions about what to do here and how to do it. And so I think it's reasonable to have a little discussion about that issue. Let's start with you, Representative Khan. Talk about transportation. We'll, we'll go around the table. Strong supporter of the increased gas tax. I think we need dedicated funding for transportation. And when you look at the fluctuation of gas prices, uh, people wouldn't even notice if you did it, except if, except if they're told to do it. We have the uh, we've seen the budget in the House. I have not seen the budget in the Senate. It's um, uh, really a bad deal. It puts, does a lot of shifting. It puts uh, um, two billion dollars on the state's credit card and shifts three billion away from areas of the budget that are important for transportation. Transit particularly important. Well, the, 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 uh, the, the Senate bill and the governor's proposal are very close to the same. There's some small differences, but they're pretty much the same proposal. I'm going to support the Senate bill. I think it's important that we move forward on this in this legislative session, and I'd like to see that bill get into a conference committee and actually uh, work something out there so we actually get something done in transportation. I know that this is an issue that costs a lot of money, and, and in the, the, if you look at it in the real world, I don't know if we're going to quite get to where everybody wants to be. But I do think it's important to get started and get moving in that direction. So I, I will be supporting the Senate transportation plan, and uh, we'll see what happens as we move along then. Well, I think it's safe to say that everyone agrees that we need to do something. Uh, certainly as you travel the, the roads in, in uh, rural Minnesota, we have a lot of roads, a lot of bridges that need a lot of work. And, and the same is, is true up in the metro area. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, we can talk about... Uh, you know, we, we need more gas tax, and that, and yet, as you look about uh, the fact that we just are coming off of a, are approaching the end of a, a fiscal period, and, and we have a two billion dollar surplus, I think the reality of it is, exactly how much more money can we take from our citizens? Um, and I think that uh, it is important to also to recognize we talk about dedicated funding, and yet as uh, you talk about a per gallon charge, uh, you look at what's happened over the years as you try to reach greater efficiencies and 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 uh, this type of thing, and you see your your volume of gas uh, perhaps uh, go down uh, per vehicle and this type of thing. Uh, all of a sudden, you're fighting a losing battle because you're always going to be dropping that that uh, total volume down. I think to expand the uh, the, the, the base, uh, having some additional uh, sales tax revenues, uh, quite frankly, makes sense. Uh, if we're going to dedicate them all to uh, to transportation at that point, uh, and yes, there is some transferring of money, uh, and but at that at the same time. Um, at the same time, it does become a, a question of, of priorities and what you spend where. And right now, transportation needs that needs that attention. So, uh, I wouldn't have even had a problem with using some of the surplus, not not as a long term solution, but as a jump start to getting caught up in some of the backlog that we have. Uh, and uh, but anyway, um, I do think I do think with the vast agreement that there is that something needs to be done. Uh, that that we can make some progress, and you know, and, and am I a big fan of uh, uh, mass transit up here in the metro area? Well, on my way to work this morning at the at the state office building, I sat and watched the train go by at seven o'clock, and there was four people riding that entire train. So I guess I'm, you know, I haven't really seen the uh, the burning use of it yet. I would just add that, uh, and Phyllis, here we go again. But uh, <laughs> uh, I'm always right. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. I, I think there's agreement that uh, one of the reasons our economy is doing so well is that uh, nationally the price of gas has come down. So I do think the price of gas does make a difference in the amount of money people have to spend mm -hmm. on going out to eat or sure. clothing or whatever. So adding an additional 
baseline 16 cents a gallon onto the price of gas, I think will make a difference in the, in the recovery rate of our economy. In the Republican plan, uh, yes, it does uh, take from a variety of sources, but it comes up with about $7 billion for transportation without raising the gas tax. And I think that's an important feature that uh, if we can do that, coming off some big tax increases the last couple of years, I think we should try to do it that way for this biennium and see uh, if we have enough people and manpower to get as many projects done as we want because uh, the job market is very tight and uh, truck drivers in short supply. So can we ramp up to the, the level we want to with, with all the money in the world? I'm not quite so sure we can. So let's look at it and uh, do this without raising the gas tax this time around. Well, the 35W bridge is in my district, so I'm very conscious as to what bad uh, yeah. unimproved bridges and roads and roads are. And the bridge right next to it is uh, the 10th Avenue bridge is desperately need in bonding of bonding for a serious renovation of it. And it's not clear that we're going to get that in the House. So, so, so uh, Senator Kuhn and I would suggest, uh, just asking you, uh, the Senate bill obviously is very different than the House bill. And so what our viewers are wondering what's going to happen, presumably the Senate's going to pass a bill close to what the governor would like. The House bill, of course, be dramatically different, and then it's off to a conference committee. That's that's the that's the process, right? That is right. the process, yes. <laughs> and and we you know we'll see the details will get worked out there. At least that's my hope that we can get to that point. And I I, I I'm, feel positive about that. I think we can. What's the time frame for this kind of activity? We're here now uh, about April 16th. The legislature has to go home. What about May 18th or May something? 7, yes. May 17th or 18th, something yeah. like that. 18th. 18th. Yeah. So, it, it, of course, that's the drop dead day. We have to have everything done by then. Um, you know, I don't. I, I've looked at the schedule. Some of the bills we're going to look at or be hearing on the House floor next week, and I don't remember seeing transportation on that list. I don't know, Senator Weber, if you. Uh, I don't remember seeing that one on there. So I, so I suspect that's you know a week after yet. But we are starting to take up finance bills uh, next week. Uh, transit was mentioned, and before I give up the floor here. I would like to talk about transit in rural Minnesota, and I think that's something that's pretty important. If you look at rural Minnesota, there's a higher percentage of people in rural Minnesota without driver's license than in the metro area. And so you see the, the, the local, those little buses that run around out mm -hmm. in rural Minnesota, and I think uh, they're pretty important for uh, service for people who need that. And it's, you know, a lot of cases it's seniors, uh, and that's why we have a, a a higher rate of citizens with without driver's license. All right. Well, we will have uh, opportunities to talk about transit, I'm sure, between now and May 18, uh, probably every single week, I would guess. 